Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you were just tuning in, we just finished going over everything Cleveland Browns from their offseason to a record prediction for this year. We also talked about the, manage- the, the Mariners moving on from manager Scott Surveys after nine years with the team, taking them to the playoffs for the first time in 20 seasons back in 2021. We also started off the show talking about our predictions for the 12-team college football playoff. College football, of course, starts tomorrow. I could not be more excited for it. But we are going to finish off our show with a Sports by GSMC Podcast Network Classic, the Friday MLB Power Rankings, taking you around the world of baseball, giving a bird's eye view at what every team has been doing in the last week or so, and giving you those updates. But before we get into that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or if you are on YouTube, you can use that Super Chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. But like I was saying, in this segment here, we are going to get into the MLB Power Rankings. It has been one week since we last took a little dive around the world of baseball, and a lot has happened. It has been quite a while, but You see, there's changes all up and down this board. Starting off, as we do, as we usually do, at number 30. The White Sox hold their crown as the worst team in baseball. They are the first team to officially be eliminated from the playoffs. The only team to officially be eliminated from the playoffs. They sit loud and proud at number 30. At 29, we have the Miami Marlins. Still the epitome of bad sitting there uh, just below the Rockies, both of those teams who have been abysmal all season long. The Angels drop one spot to number 27. They're 2-8 and in their last 10, and there's not too much going for them just about now. They did call up Johnny Cueto, making his first start in a long time earlier this week. So uh, old veteran, he's been pitching forever. It's fun to get a name like that back in the league. At 26, we have the Oakland Athletics, uh, soon to be no longer Oakland Athletics. They are up a spot from 27. They've been surprisingly good for the Oakland Athletics over the last week or so. They're 6-4 and in their last 10 as they continue to just be slightly, slightly above the bottom tier of teams. Same thing can be said about the Washington Nationals. They fall one spot to 25. They've been bad, but their young stars of the future are starting to come up. James Wood has been awesome. So much fun to watch. News broke today that Dylan Cruz, uh, the second overall pick in the draft last year, will be up on Monday when they take on the Yankees and Juan Soto returns to D.C. for the first time as a Yankee. That should be a lot of fun. Very exciting times here in D.C. The Blue Jays fall a spot as well. They continue to struggle. Uh, Fun fact about them, in their game against the Red Sox coming up, Danny Jansen will be the first player in the history of baseball to have officially played for both teams in the same game as he was traded after in a game uh, earlier after a game was suspended made up and uh, he will be officially be playing for both teams so that's a lot of fun I believe that's tonight though so fun little history note being made the Tigers up two spots to 23. They've been really good recently. They have AL Cy Young favorite Tariq Skubal on the mound, and that is the big bright spot. They should be pretty good as uh, as the season continues. At 22, we have the Pirates. They're down two spots from where they were last week. Uh, I was remiss. I, I forgot to mention last week they were on a 10-game losing streak. That all but tanked their playoff chances. They continue to be a little bit better than a little bit better than losing 10 in a row but uh, they still have not been great. They fall two spots to 22. 
The reigning World Series champions, the Texas Rangers, sit nice and comfortably at spot 21, down two spots from where they were before. They just have not been the same, whether it be injuries or a World Series hangover, they have not been good all season long. At 20, we have the Reds. They're up a spot, not because of anything they did, although they did go on a bit of a run in the last two weeks, but because the Rangers and the Pirates have just been worse. The Rays fall one spot to number 19. They are not out of the playoff race. Don't don't look now, but if the Rays get hot, they're just within range to potentially have some Rays magic and sneak into that final wild card spot in the AL. The Cubs at 18 are up four spots. They're just above the Reds here. They're just barely hanging on to NL wildcard contention. This is what everyone in this tier is, is at, from the Reds to the to the to the to Reds to the Mariners, really, are these teams that are barely holding on to these wild card spots. If they get hot and the right team gets cold, they might be able to get in. Cardinals fall a spot to 17. They seem like they had a playoff spot locked up. Unfortunately, their uh, their age caught up to them. Their starting pitching kind of fell down a, down a cliff, and they reverted back to where they were at the beginning of the season. The Giants are up a spot to 16, as they are the team outside of the Mets that has the best chance to make that third wild card spot a game in the NL. The Mariners, we talked a lot about them. They obviously fire their manager. They're on a bit of a skid, in danger of falling below 500 for the first time in forever uh, this season. Uh, they drop three spots to 15. The Red Sox are at 14, and this is where we really get into contention for uh, wild card spots, but you're not in there. That tier that includes the Red Sox and the Mets. Uh, both of those teams are just outside of that third wild card spot. The Red Sox move up one spot to 14, and the Mets stay put at 13. At 12, the Braves have figured it out seemingly. The offense still hasn't been to snuff, but they're back in a wild card spot pretty comfortably, uh, holding on to that third wild card spot just ahead of the Mets and the Giants. The Twins and the Royals probably should be tied for 10 here, but we don't do ties here. The Twins drop two spots. The Royals go up one. They are basically at the same. They have the same record. They're both in the wild card. They're in wild card two and three right now behind the Orioles. These two teams have both won. Uh, have both been really good over their last 10, just refused to give ground, or only two games back of their division lead. So that AL Central is coming down to the wire. At nine, we have the Astros, the team that has uh, basically killed the Mariners. Uh, they just continue to win games, slowly and surely building their lead over the Mariners as they go up to ninth place. At eighth, we have the Brewers, and they have been really, really good. I really wanted to move them up into the top five, but I can't put them over every team ahead of them. That's how good these top seven have been uh, all season, and especially after the All-Star break. Especially after the All-Star break applies to the Diamondbacks and the Padres, both of which have been the hottest teams coming out of the break. They have all secured their playoff spots all but with their performances coming out of the break. Both of them have been incredibly hot. The Padres currently sit half a game back of the Diamondbacks, which is why they're at seven and the Diamondbacks are at six. But both of these teams have been so much fun to watch. The Orioles at number five fall two spots. They've been struggling a little bit lately. Uh, we didn't get the best out of them in their last in this last week. They got walked off a couple times by the Mets stings but they're still a really good team at four we have the phillies they're up a spot from five last week again a really really good team every team in this top 10 really every team in this top 11 i think are uh, you know what i'll extend it all the way to 12 for you guys everyone in the top 12 here is really really good this year uh at three, we have the Guardians. They're up a spot. They've been a little streaky. I'm starting to get a little concerned about them, but they are, they're going to hold steady in the top three here. They have too much talent. Uh, that bullpen is elite and electric to watch. They hold at number three. The Yankees stay at, at 
number two. Uh, the combination of Aaron Judge hitting his 300th home run, Juan Soto hitting a career-high 36 home runs, Aaron Judge chasing history, trying to break his own record once again. He's just two home runs off that pace, uh, and the Nats like to give up home runs, so we'll see what happens in this series. And finally, at number one, holding on to that spot for a second straight week, the Dodgers, who currently have the best record in baseball, not by much, though. This is a tight race down the finish. There's not one true team that's running away with anything, and that means we're gonna we're being set up for one of the best finishes to the MLB season. A super exciting MLB postseason is around the corner. I can feel it in my bones. I cannot wait. But let me know. Is there anything that I got drastically wrong? Anything you completely disagree with that uh, that I should be personally held accountable for? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Uh, I hope everybody has a great, great weekend. Uh, we are going to be back on Monday talking about week one of the, or I guess, week zero of the college football playoffs here today uh, that happened over the weekend. I will see you then. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I've been your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Bye-bye.